Praise the Lord. Welcome each and every one of you. Thank you for joining us live. If you're watching the late broadcast, I just want you to know that our God is a miracle working God. And you have not tuned in by mistake. Just, I mean, you want, you're going to want to settle down, put your seatbelt on, get ready to be blessed. Uh, as we have Tony Finley with us today. Um, I tell you, there is, I feel in my spirit, I feel that there is going to be an importation. Yeah. And, and so there's, the word is going to be taught, but, but really it, it's going to be caught. Mm. And there's going to be an importation. So more than, just a, more than just knowledge that's important, and the knowledge is phenomenal, it's practical things that we can run with, but I tell you, just... As, as you listen, just open up your heart and, and allow the Holy Ghost to come in. And even as the Word is taught, I really believe that get ready for whatever miracle you're believing for. Just, just like the woman who touched the hem of his garment, she made a withdrawal and she was instantly made whole. Everybody was touching Jesus, nobody goes changed except the one that made a withdrawal. I tell you, the anointing of God is here. Make a withdrawal today. Get ready. Hallelujah. Let's welcome Tony Finley. My big buddy. Praise the Lord. Well, praise God. Yes. I can sense you guys are really hungry. Oh, yes. That's yes, awesome. That's awesome. Well, you're going to be filled. There's no way around that. You know, we had a great time last week. We're, uh, Jeanette and I are so honored and blessed to be here. Love your pastors. And uh, for those of you who are planted here, you're blessed. You know, as a pastor, everything, all the blessing of God is in the land where God plants you and you'll flourish. So you should thank God and pray for these guys. You have wonderful pastors uh, after his own heart. Amen. That's, that's awesome. It's rare because what the Lord told me. The night before our first service, he said, he said, Tony, if you'll allow my spirit to create an environment of my presence, and then if you'll just flow with me, I'm irresistible, uh -huh. and I'll draw all men unto me. Yep. It's all yep. about him. Yeah. It's all about him. And in Paul's letter to the church at Corinth, it talks about the communion of the Holy Spirit. You know, I'm, I've been uh, just really feeding. Um, my heaven is to sit at the beach with AirPods on with a little notebook in my hand. I've probably, I think I've got a stack of notes about this thick. Uh, I'm, I'm starting a series next Sunday on the person, nature, and work of the Holy Spirit. But the communion of the Holy Spirit, that word communion, it literally means fellowship. And, and he's not a force. He is not an it. He is a divine person. And, and He lives within you. If you've received the baptism of the Holy Spirit, He's not only within you, but He's upon you. And He knows everything. He has already, or I should say it correctly, He is in every day of your life right now. He knows everything. Could you imagine... Actually, Jeanette, can, can you come up here? I want to use you in this example. So let's say Jeanette is the Holy Spirit. And she knows everything. Right? Everything. Everything that I'll ever need, she knows. She knows everything that I'll ever face. She knows everything the enemy's ever going to do with me. And she's with me. You know, the Bible says the Holy Spirit will abide with us forever. Isn't that amazing? So then you just walk with me. You're right here. So now here I am in life. This is what a lot of Christians do. They have the all-knowing one with them. And, it, and they're just sitting here so frustrated. I don't understand. What am I going to do in this situation? I don't know what to do. Can you help me? You know, I, I just need help. Yeah, hey, brother, can I, can I, can I talk to you? I, I need... Can you help me, help me make some decisions in my life? And, and then I will run over here and, ma'am, could, could you help me? I, I'm so confused. 
confused and, I, and I'm hurting and I need help. This is what we do. Yes. When all the time, the one who knows everything is in us and with us. So I want to encourage you today. The Holy Spirit, he's the spirit of truth. Truth is the word of God. Oh, there might be facts, but facts will always be superseded by truth. He's the spirit of truth. He will guide you into all the truth. Today, he wants to guide you into the truth of the word of God that you might lay hold of it so that it produces. You don't produce. The word produces. Amen. Your job, we walk by faith. Faith is a rest. That means I cease from my own works. I only work out what he's working in. But the word does it. The word does the work. So we're talking about the foundation and formula of faith. So let's kind of get into it. The foundation of faith. There are four things that have been jumping out at me. You know, it says in Psalm 145, verse 8 and verse 9. Psalm 145 verse 8 and verse 9, it says this, the Lord is gracious. The Lord, it says this is what he is. Gracious. This, mean, this word in the Hebrew language means he is disposed to show favor. Always. The Bible says that the eyes of the Lord look to and fro throughout the whole earth. He's looking at who he can show himself strong on behalf of. F.F. F. Bosworth, he wrote a great book. It's called Christ the Healer. It was actually our textbook uh, when Keith Moore and Raymond, when I was a student there. But F.F. F. Bosworth said this. He said, if you could elevate inside of like a gigantic enclosure, the whole Pacific Ocean, and, and hover it above, above you. The pressure of those millions and millions and millions of gallons of water, the pressure of that water trying to get out of that enclosure is how that, I mean, it would be looking for every, any little pinhole to get through so that the, that's the way God is. He's gracious. And then it says, he's full of compassion. Now this word is real interesting. He's full of compassion. This means he is full of eager yearning. It, it literally means it's where we get the word mercy. Healing is a mercy. Over and over, it uses the same word in the Greek. It's all from the same. It, it literally says that he was, Jesus was moved with compassion and healed all of their sick. He, he's, he's full of compassion. He's full of eager yearning. God, when he's looking at your life, he knows everything you need. You might think you do, but you don't. You, God's path for your life is so glorious, you may think, man, if I just had $500, it would solve a lot of problems. God's looking at you going, you need $10 million to do what I've called you to do. Huh. He knows everything that you need, and he is full of eager yearning. He wants to bless you. He wants you to have it. He's already given it to you. So now he gave you the God, the third person of the Godhead, the Holy Spirit, to lead you into all the truth, to help you lay hold of these things. Foundation number one, it goes on to say, the Lord is gracious, full of compassion. He is slow to anger. And then it goes on again, and of great mercy. It literally says the same thing again. And then it finishes by saying, the Lord is good to all. Mm -hmm. Now think about that. He's an all-knowing God. All-knowing God. 
He knows. He actually, as he sits here, right now, God sees the day I was born and the day I'll go home to be with him. He sees me a million years in the future because he's not in time. He sees everything. He sees a man be born, live his whole life. He knows he'll never accept him. He knows he'll never live for him. And yet God, because he's gracious, full of compassion, slow to anger and great and of great mercy, he's good to all. And his tender mercies are over all his works. He's good to all. He'll still, he'll still, the spirit of God, this, this man's whole life will be pushed, will be just trying to convince him and convince him and convince him. Even though he knows he won't receive him. Isn't that amazing? See, God is like that because he's no respecter of persons. That's his nature. So foundation number one is God is good all the time. He's not good sometimes and not others. We can go on. We can teach for a month easily on that, but we won't because we don't have time. But God is good all the time. In order to live by faith and walk by faith, in order to understand and see the word of God, you must have a foundation that God is good. That he is good. Go to Numbers chapter 23. I've been wondering where we're going to launch off here. This is a perfect place. Numbers chapter 23. We're going to look at verse 19. Numbers 23 verse 19. Now the reason why we led with that verse is the Lord spoke to me during, I mean there is such, it's, 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 it's kind of a challenge right now for me not to just sit up here and just stand up here and cry because I, I'm, I'm believing God to even be able to talk right now. Um, there's such a healing anointing here. Yes, yes. So the Lord wants to eradicate sickness and disease before you yes. leave. So while the word's going forth today, man, we're going to lay hands on anybody who wants hands laid on you. But remember, it's not, it's not based on what God can do. He's already provided healing yes. for you. It's based on what you can believe. So you've got to know he's always good. Any sickness or disease in your body, listen, it's not from him. Amen. Remember Matthew 8, 17? Here we go. Matthew 8, 17, remember that? Jesus himself bore your sickness and carried your pain. Yes. Yours. Yes. So on the cross, every, every sickness and all pain that you would ever have that was yours in this earth, Jesus bore it. Hmm. So if you have symptoms in your body today, if he already bore yours, then those symptoms, that disease, that pain is not yours. Yeah, that's right. That's right. It's trespassing not in your body. It's trespassing on God's property because my body's not mine. It's his. Yeah. It has no legal right in your body. That's right. Because it's not yours. You ever see those commercials? My diabetes. Yeah. Have you ever seen the one, my depression, he has a little cloud walking around with you? No, no, it's not mine. Yeah, that's right. I refuse to say it's mine. Right. Because to say it's mine, yes. I would have to violate truth. Yes. Yes. Amen. So God wants to eradicate sickness and disease. So get excited, and faith will be built as we as we as we prepare this. Numbers twenty three nineteen says this: God is not a man that he should lie; neither the son of man that he should repent. That word in the Hebrew language means to change. So right here, we see that God never lies and never changes. Hmm. Foundation number two, foundation number one is God is good. Hmm. Foundation number two is God never changes. Huh. Look at what it says here. Hath he said... And shall he not do it? Doesn't it say in Psalm 107, 20? Yes. He sent his word yes. and healed them. Yes. 
right? Psalm 103, verses 1 through verse 5. The Hebrew scholars tell us it's the equivalent of a present participle. It literally is it, it literally is not only what God did, it's what he's doing now, it's what he'll always do. It literally, where it says he's redeemed your life from destruction, it literally has the notation in there that literally every breath that I breathe, God causes my lungs to work and my heart to work. Every, he's holding all creation. Mm. Yes. Isn't that good news? Yes. It says, hath he said and shall he not do it? Hath, or hath he spoken, and shall he not make it good? Wow. He watches over his word to perform it. Yes. Now we know in Titus 1 2, you don't have to turn there, but Titus 1 2, it literally says, in hope of eternal life, what does it say next? Whom the God who cannot lie, yeah. cannot lie. Before, said he would bring before the world began. Huh. God, Titus calls, or the Holy Spirit inspires Titus to say that God not only will not lie, he cannot lie. Wow. Thank you. So that means if God says it's Monday, it's not a lie because you know if he said it was Monday, guess what it would be? It'd be Monday. <laughs> You've got to believe that. Everything God says comes to pass. When he said you can do all things yes. through Christ who strengthens you, see that very word is filled with the life and power that enables me to do all things. Yes. Because his power is there. Yes. Amen. Right. It, see, we've got to get this. God is not only the God that will not lie, He's the God that cannot lie. Yeah. So now let's keep going. Let's go into the New Testament now. In Hebrews chapter 13. You might not hear anything new this morning. But I can guarantee you're going to hear it new. Because that's the way the anointing works. Hebrews chapter 13 verse 8. Talking about Jesus. It doesn't say, it just doesn't say Jesus. That'd be great. It says Jesus Christ, Christ, the anointed one and his anointing. Jesus Christ, the anointed one and his anointing, the same yesterday. So now, when was this spoken? This was spoken after Jesus was raised from the dead, right? He's seated in heaven when God inspired I believe it was Paul, but whoever wrote the book of Hebrews, to say this, that Jesus was the same yesterday. What did he do yesterday? He healed all. Everyone who came to him in faith were healed. Everyone. Not one time did he ever look at somebody and say, it's just not my will, I've got a deeper plan for you. Huh. Never. Huh. So you can look at the four Gospels and look at, at Jesus' ministry. Because he even said, guys, if you've seen me, you've seen the Father. As a matter of fact, Jesus came to show. It's, it, the Greek words say to draw the Father out of the shadows and show him to the world. So you can say, if you look at the life of Jesus, you can see the will of God for all men for all time in relation to healing. Just in the ministry of Jesus. Nobody ever came to him and he said no. Only one came to him and said, I know you can, but will you heal me? And that's where we are today. See, they, their faith in Jesus was different when he was on the earth. They grew up knowing when Messiah would come, he'd have healing in his wings. They knew so this is why they come to him and say, if you can, you can make me whole. Right? Or if, if you will. They would come to him and say, in every case except the leper, the leper said, I know you can, but will you? He said, I will. Of course I will. I always will. Be clean. That's the only time of 19 individual cases. But many other cases, they came to him and said, can you? 
They simply had to believe that he was sent from God, that he was the Messiah. They didn't have a problem knowing if he's the Messiah, he'll heal me. But see, today we've been watered down with a bunch of religion. So now we think that maybe God's got some bigger plan or higher plan. Keep reading. We're one verse away from victory. Yes, God's ways are higher than our ways. But the next verse says, but he reveals them to us by his spirit. Isn't that good news? Yes. It says, Jesus Christ, the same yesterday and today and forever. God does not change. Now, if you go to James chapter 1, just right here, verse 16, it says this. Do not err, my beloved brethren. I love James. This was, he's a pastor. Jesus, half-brother, pastor of the church in Jerusalem. He says, do not err. James chapter 1. James chapter 1, verse 16. Do not err, my beloved brethren. Every good gift. Remember, he's good. Every good gift. Every perfect gift is from above. And comes down from the Father of lights, in whom there is no variableness, neither shadow of turning. He never changes. He's always good. And this word variableness, we get our word parallel from that root. But variableness literally means there is no no changing in God. It also means that what God has done for one, he will do for all. So God is good, right? God, he never changes. Jesus, the Bible says, where two or more are gathered in his name, there he is in our midst. He's here in the person of the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit, his, when he manifests, that is the anointing. That is the power. He's here right now. The power of God is present to heal right now because he's here. And he's the same. Isn't that good news? So now you've got to go into the third foundation. The third foundation. You've got to know he's good. You've got to know he'll never change. And what he's done for one. If he's healed one person, healing's for everybody. You've got to know that. But then number three, you've got to trust him. You've got to trust him. So let's turn to Psalm 125. That's a great, great way to jump off. Psalm 125. We're going to look at verse 1. Psalm 125, verse 1. See, trust is based on knowledge. To know him is to trust him. Okay? And see, you've been created to know him. He put a new spirit in you to know him. The Holy Spirit's down in the inside of you so that you can know him. Oh, I love this. Hallelujah. If you, and we don't have time. Actually, I did a whole series on trusting him and we probably scratched the surface. But you find that in order, the definition of someone who trusts God is this, from the word of God. This is a person whose mind is fixed on God. If you'll fix your mind on God, you will trust him. And that's, see, that trust is an expression of faith. Right? So this is, this is important because when you trust God, what it does is it brings empowerment from him into your life. And how do you know you're trusting him? Trust. See, when I'm, when I'm trusting God, it's because I know him. My mind is fixed on him. But now, I, his empowerment, the power of God is, is manifesting in my life because I trust him. Yes. Right? But how do I know if I'm trusting him? Trust, when you trust God, it always is expressed outwardly in rest. Mm. Wow. 
So if you're trying to figure your situation out, it's because you're not trusting him. But if you're just resting and you're walking around and you, you, just, you, you just feel like you never hear from God, but your mind is fixed on his word, you're meditating in his word, you'll walk around and say, Father, I thank you. Oh, I thank you that I'm your child and I'm led by your spirit. I know your voice, another voice I'll never follow. Oh, Father, you make darkness light before me. You make crooked things straight in my life. Remember that from last week? Amen. That prophetic word is still, yes. it's still here. Yes. See, that's, that's how, and, and notice what I'm doing when I'm trusting him. See, I'm, I'm speaking. I'm speaking out of my spirit what I really believe. I trust him. It brings his power on the scene in my life. And then now, what am I doing? I'm resting. That means I've ceased from my own works. I'm not trying to figure out what to do. I'm only looking down on the inside, and I'll only work out what he's working in. Huh. So I get this unction that I think I need to start maybe apply over here or go over here or whatever. And, 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 and I just start being led with no fear because I trust him. See, Old Testament... You fall seven times, God will lift you up. New Testament, he'll keep you from falling. Thank you. So Satan, I'm sorry. See, I'm not trying to be successful. I'm a child of God. I am successful. Now, I might not look it yet on the outside, but you just hide and watch. Because I know I'm successful. All this failure stuff has to bow in my life. I don't care what my past is. I haven't messed it up. And here's the test. If you could fog a mirror, you haven't messed it up. Because if you have breath in your lungs, you are alive on this earth. And the word is for you. And God's for you. And you and God are a majority in every situation. Because you might be a zero, but he'll be a hundred. If you're a 90, he'll be a 10. Right? And the mighty Holy Spirit's here for you. He's good all the time. You can trust him. Let's go to Proverbs chapter 3. We're right here in Psalms. Proverbs chapter 3, verse 5. Proverbs chapter 3, verse 5. It says this, Trust in the Lord with how much of your heart? With all of your heart. If, you'll know, if you know Him. So how do I get to the point to trust Him? Get to know Him. How do I know Him? One way. It's through the Word of God. Through the Word of God. Trust in the Lord with all of thine heart and lean not on your own understanding. That means don't rely on your own understanding. Yep. But in all your ways, acknowledge him. That means in all of my ways, I consider him. So at my job, am I considering him? Yes. Yeah. They got me working overtime. They got me doing this. I've got quotas. The world system is designed to create fear and unbelief. It's designed to steal, kill, and destroy from you. And it's designed for you to toil. But you've been redeemed from toil. A Christian should never toil. So if you're in a, you got this thing where you're in a season where you got to work a, a lot of hours and whatever, then you, you draw from God's grace, but then you start speaking to your situation. <coughs> And you can, you can be, I've worked over 100 hours a week consistently in the corporate world and still been at rest and still have not toiled. Mm -hmm. But you won't do it long because God will change that situation. Yeah. Yeah. You lead somebody to Christ and they have to work on Sunday. Don't worry about that. Don't, don't, don't just, you tell them, say, listen, God can change your schedule. Yeah. Yeah. Don't beat yourself up because you're at work on a Sunday. But also, don't, work, don't be at work on a Sunday for the next 12 months because you've got to be planted at church. Yeah. But, but don't you try to work that out. Let God work that out. Yeah. Right? See, see, what we're talking about is life on a different level. In all your ways, acknowledge Him, and He will direct your paths. So God is good. Right? Yes. God never changes. And you can trust him. Yes. Let's finish this up. Let's go to James chapter, Jeremiah chapter 17. Hallelujah. I'm trying to get to the formula of faith. 
we'll get there. It's so funny because I can just tell there's so much more happening. It, it's like, you know, it, it's just like, it's like a glacier when you minister. What you're seeing is about the tip of the iceberg. It's just mostly underneath. God's depositing things in people's heart. It says in uh, Jeremiah 17, verse 5, it says, Thus saith the Lord, Cursed be the man that trusts in man. Hmm. Now, the word cursed is, this is really a nice word. It means empowered to fail. <laughs> wow. Wow. It's a verb. Awrar is the Hebrew word. It's a verb. It means to inflict with a curse. Cursed be the man that trusts in man and makes flesh his arm. What that means, cursed is the man who trusts in himself. Who's trusting in man and trusts in himself. Hmm. We put our trust in God. It means to inflict with a curse. It literally means to bind with a spell. If you trusting yourself, it's like you're, you've positioned yourself where the enemy can, it's like he's casting a spell on you. It's really confusing. It means to hem in with obstacles. If you trust in yourself, over time you're going to get hemmed in with obstacles. This obstacle will stop you, so you try to go here, then there's something else. It's all happening because you're trusting in yourself. It literally means it will render you powerless to resist. The Bible says, just what your pastor so graciously said, you submit yourself to God, resist the devil. But see, if you're trusting in yourself, it will literally put you in a position where you won't resist. And then he won't flee. Right? So this, it says, this person shall be like a heath in the desert. That's a desert bush. It, it's like a juniper bush. It literally, this bush is isolated. This is a simile. This, a person who's trusting himself will be like a desert bush. Destitute. Right? This is huge. He, he shall not see when good comes. He won't even see it. Now, who's good? God's good. Huh. Won't even see. There's Christians today that are hurting. They could be in church around people, but they're alone. They think there's no way out. They don't see only because they're trusting See, you, if you put your trust in a doctor, what happens when that symptom or that disease is something and the doctor sits across the table for you and says, I'm sorry, but I, there's nothing we can do for you anymore. See, we don't live in, the, in that world because God's a healer. Shall not see when good comes, but shall inhabit parched places in the wilderness. See, that's a parched place is a place where there's a lack of water so nothing can grow. Wow. That's what happens when you trust in yourself or trust in people. Nothing can grow in your life. You just put a lid on, on, on your life. In a salt land that is not inhabited. Wow. But look at, look at this, verse 7. But blessed... This means empowered to prosper is the man that trusts in the Lord and whose hope the Lord is. See, hope is in the future. All my hope is in him. All of my hope is in him. So see, today I trust in the Lord. And oh, when I look to my future, I get excited. If you have something working in your body, a disease in your body, realize Today, that's going to turn. Yes. Yes. Because the power of God goes right to the root, and it breaks the root. It breaks the root of sickness and disease. Yes. And then the symptoms just work themselves out. The healing power of God will restore your body to health, strength, and mm. wholeness. Yes. Not 80% all the way so that it never will come back. Yes. It says this person who puts his trust in the Lord... 
He'll be like a tree planted by waters. Notice, more than enough provision. You always see this. That spreads out her roots by the river. It'll cause, when you trust in the Lord, it will cause your roots to be spread out, which builds strength. Yes. So that nothing, the circumstances of your life, yes. the, the, Matthew talks about it as wind, rain, and floods. Yes. Build, beat against that house, but it never falls. Mm -hmm. huh. It says here, her leaf shall be green. green. Mm. That means fresh. God makes all things new. That means when you read your Bible, see, if you're reading your Bible and you're bored, that, that means you're starving spiritually. Huh. If, if you're bored. None, none of the, just, so how do I fix that? Oh, all I got to do is get to know God. I get to know him as I feed on his word. Pretty soon, I'll start hungering after him. Then the more I feed, the more I hunger. And the more I hunger, the more I feed. And, and then pretty soon, yeah. see, I'm confessing, I'm meditating in the word. I'm confessing the word Amen. out of my mouth. Why do I do that? To get it down in my heart. And then when it's in abundance, Matthew 12, 34, guess why I'm confessing the word? Because it's in abundance in my heart. So now i got this circle going, yes, yes. so I'm always talking. It says my leaf will be green. That means every time I hear the word of God, every scripture I read is fresh. My marriage is fresh. Pastoring is fresh to me. Everything in life is fresh. Oh, I might be getting older chronologically, but I'm not getting old. I'm not going to decrease. I'm going to increase. Right? It says here, and shall not be careful in the year of drought. That means I am not tied to what's happening on the outside. So economies can go like this, but guess what? This year my giving is going to go like this. My increase in life is going to go like this. Oh, we have churches. Oh, you know, the summertime, the summertime giving always, why? You know why giving always goes down in the summertime? Because you're saying it. <laughs> And, and, and oh man, all those principalities and powers are like, yeah, now we have a legal right. No, no, God has no plans for you to go backwards financially. Learn this statement when the enemy's coming at you. Satan, you don't even know how much I don't care. <laughs> as a pastor, you know I don't care. I do not, as a matter of fact, I refuse to care for the yeah. people of the church that I pastor. I refuse to. It depletes me. There's no anointing. But oh, do I love them. Mm -hmm. I won't care for you. Or I won't care about you. I'll care for you because I love you. But I won't care about you. I'll give that care to the Lord because I can't do anything about it anyway. Yeah. But oh, will I love you? Absolutely. The Bible didn't say I'll give pastors after my heart that will care about you. No, the Bible says cast the hold of your care on him. Mm -hmm. Satan, you don't know how much I don't care. You're defeated. Yeah. Yeah. I'm not trying to be victorious. I already have the victory. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. I, I was already healed 2,000 years ago. Right. Way before I even showed up on the scene. <laughs> way before you even had a thought to put this lying symptom on my body, I was already healed from it. Hmm. Oh, yeah. Things yeah. got to change, right? Yeah. I won't be careful in the year of drought. Neither shall cease from yielding fruit. We never cease. Jeanette and I were ministering this morning to a young lady. We minister all the time. Why? Because we're so full. Found people. Find people. Heal people. Bring healing to people. Right? This is so huge. So now let's keep going. Galatians chapter 5. Galatians chapter 5. We've got to go a little faster. No, I'm just teasing. We'll just we'll go until we go. And then we're not going to get in a hurry. Galatians chapter 5, verse 6. Not only do you have to know that he's good, that he never changes, and that you can trust him. You have to know that faith works by love. Hmm. It says in Galatians chapter 5, verse 6, For in Christ, or in, for in Jesus Christ, neither circumcision avails anything nor uncircumcision. But what does avail? 
Faith which works by love. Hmm. You can't get out of the love walk and, and your, faith, your faith won't operate. Faith works by love. Hmm. So go to the Song of Solomon, chapter 2. We've got to look real quickly at this. So if you go Psalms, Proverbs, then it goes Ecclesiastes, and then the Song of Solomon's right there. Song of Solomon, chapter 2, in verse 16, gives us a great picture that will lead us into the New Testament truth. Song of Solomon, chapter 2, verse 16. This, this statement... My beloved is mine, and I am his. It doesn't say, I'm his, and he's mine. It says, my beloved is mine, and I am his. So it's the Hebrew word, my beloved is mine. It's the Hebrew phrase, dodi li, and I am his. It's the Hebrew phrase, phrase Annie lo. See, you have to get that right. Until you have a revelation mm. in your heart that the God of heaven has completely given himself to you, mm. you won't give yourself to him. Wow. Wow. There are some people struggling with that right now. Here. Not, not online, but here. I want to encourage you. The Holy Spirit will walk you into this. It, it, it changes your whole life. The more that you realize that my beloved is mine, the more you will give yourself to him. Oh, God wants all of you. This is so very important. So where is this in the New Testament? Go to 1 John chapter 4 and it literally leads us into it. 1 John chapter 4 we'll start in verse 16. Hallelujah. It says this. 1 John chapter 4 verse 16 and we have known and believed the love that God hath to us. See, see, I have to have a revelation which comes only from the Holy Spirit through the Word of God that God loves me. Hmm. Now, I'm not talking natural love where it's conditional. No, this is unconditional. This is not based on what you do. You blew it this morning, God loves you just as much as Jesus. He loves you just as much as when you are a rock star spiritually, man. He, he loves you just as much. You have to know that. Because if you don't know that, you won't really understand that he's, everything about him is yours. He's given himself to you. Because, and if you, if you don't realize that, then you won't be able to give yourself to him. It says, we have known and believed the love that God has to us. God is love, and he that dwells in love dwells in God and God in him. Herein is our love made perfect that we may have boldness in the day of judgment. Now this is really a little vague. This is not talking about the judgment seat of Christ when we stand before the Lord. See, we have to know this. Herein our love is made perfect once we know and believe that God loves me. And see, now that love will be made perfect so that I'll have boldness in my day of judgment. That, that word judgment in the Greek means crisis. Guess what the day of crisis is in our lives? Well, today it's the 18th. Mm -hmm. Guess what? I'll, I'll prophesy. Guess what it'll be tomorrow? The 19th. <laughs> That'll be your day of crisis. Every day of your life on this earth. We See, we want to make sure that we have boldness in the day of crisis. You want to walk bold? You got to know when you mess up, Satan's going to come and try to put a bunch of junk on you. Yeah. And you need to realize, no, 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 no. 
Not shame on me. Yeah, Father, yes, I chose wrong and I sinned. Thank God for 1 John 1, 9. I have to confess my sin. I simply go to him and say, Father, now I have to confess my sin. Homo logeo is the Greek word. It means to say the same thing. So God wants me to come to him if I mess up and say the same thing about my sin that he says. Father, I chose wrongly here and I sinned. But Father, I declare today that that sin was condemned. You condemned that sin in the body of Jesus 2,000 years ago. And his blood paid for that sin. And it's washed away that you remember it no more. And that it's as far as the east is from the west. Father, right now, I just, through faith, I receive your forgiveness afresh and anew. And Father, I receive cleansing from all my unrighteousness. Guess what's left if you wash off unrighteousness? You're just righteous. That's right. So see, this is, we have to know this in our day of crisis or judgment. The enemy crosses a line, you're like, no. How is the spirit, when the enemy comes in like the little loser that he is, you know, he's a pre-Adamic loser. He was kicked out of heaven. But when he comes in like that, the Bible says, like a flood, the spirit of God will raise a banner and stop him. You know what that, you know, you know what that banner is? That is you. Speaking the word out of your mouth that the Holy Spirit brings to your heart. You have boldness in the day of judgment. Jump down to verse 19. Here's the key. We love him because he first loved us. Now, real quick, I don't have time to go into it, but I want to give you this. And you could, you can go, you could even go on our website. I, I taught a whole series on the formula of faith. But I want to give you just a piece of this to finish today. The Bible says, it says it right, actually go to Romans chapter 10, real quick. Romans chapter 10, I hope this is helping you today. Yes. I know it's helping me. In verse 6 it says, but the righteousness which is of faith speaks this way. The right, see I was made righteous through faith in Jesus. So now that I'm righteous through faith in Jesus, how do I speak? This is what it speaks. It tells us in verse 8. The word is near thee. Yes. Even in my mouth and in my heart, that is the word of faith which we preach. Yes. The word is near me. It's in my heart and it's in my mouth. Now if you jump down to verse 13, it's going to give you the formula of faith. It says, for whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. Huh. Huh. So that means if you call, which would be your words and your actions upon the name of the Lord, you get the result. If huh. you call, you get the result, right? But huh. then look at this. It says, but how then shall they call on him in whom they've not believed? So that tells me, unless you're believing right, you won't act or speak right to get the right result. Hmm. So you gotta, you got to call to get the result, right? But you got to believe right in order to call. Huh. But then it doesn't stop there. And how shall they believe in him of whom they've not heard? So if I'm not hearing, right right if I'm not hearing right I won't choose to believe right hmm. remember believing is always a choice people believe crazy things Here, here's a really a crazy thing they walk around the island of Hawaii at night even and they see these stars and then they walk around in the day and they see all this beauty and they're so foolish, they think there's no God. Huh. That, that's not, you're not thinking right. Well, why? Because you didn't hear right. But if you'll hear right, you'll choose to believe right, and then you'll speak and act right, 
and you'll always get the right result. It's the formula of faith. Now Satan, he'll try to get you, he'll try to get you all stressed and go, yeah, okay, you gotta live right, you gotta overcome this. Forget about the acting. Right? If you want to change how you're acting, you gotta change how you're talking. If you want to change how you're talking, you gotta change how you're believing. But to change how you believe, you gotta change how you're hearing. Right? But then it goes even further. How shall they hear without a preacher? I love that part. That's a proclaimer. Yeah. 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 How can I hear right if I'm... It, see, it says right here, how shall they hear without a preacher? But let's go one step further because, oh my gosh, many, many have been sent, and that's wonderful, but a lot of idiots have been just, they just went, and there's no anointing, Right? How shall they preach except they be sent? So that tells me that the Holy Spirit will send people. He'll send me to be planted in the church so that I can hear. He'll send me and bring friends around me that will speak the right things. He will put me in an environment where I can choose to hear right. Hmm. Psalm 1.1, 1, 1, blessed is the man that does not walk in the way of the ungodly, nor stand, now we're not walking, now we're standing in the, in the, in the seat of sinners, or standing with sinners, and now, now we're not even just sitting or standing, now we're sitting, or who sit in the seat of the scornful. You know what the scornful is? That is, the Hebrew word literally means one who teaches others about others. Huh. In this church, if anyone comes up to you and says anything about what these guys as pastors should be doing, that is straight from the pit. Yeah. God will never speak to any of you about what they need to do. Yeah. Huh. Huh. Now, they're, they're human, so they can miss it, so you need to pray for them. Have you ever, let's, let's have a prayer meeting. <laughs> We're going to have a prayer meeting. We need to pray for Pastor Nick and Esther. Because, you know, they've got this problem and that problem. See, it's all designed for people to hear wrong. Right. Huh. So that they believe wrong. Hmm. They choose to believe wrong. And then pretty soon, now they're talking and acting wrong. And, oh my gosh, their life's a mess. Yeah. Huh. So help people. Hey, you know what? Can we talk about something else? I don't have any opinion about that. Yeah. That'll get you out of more trouble. I have no opinion about that. Hey, did you hear? You, you, you girls. Wow. Women. Drama. How, how old are you? 24. 24? You're 24. I thought you were like in high school. That's amazing. All right. Mid it all starts in middle school. Middle school drama is just unbelievable. Yeah. Right? It's just drama, drama, drama. Why? It's all, see, Satan, if he can capture, if he can capture your thought life and get you hearing wrong things, it'll build, it'll build an imagination, a vain imagination, which all behavior comes out of that. You choose to believe these things. So that's the formula of faith. You must be careful who you're hearing. Hmm. The older I get, the bolder I get. Listen, if you're if you're going to a church, if you're listening to me right now, don't go to a church that doesn't preach the word. Because yeah, exactly. huh. it, it'll change you. If you're hearing wrong, you're going to choose to believe wrong. Yeah. And then you're going to act and speak wrong, which is going to get you the wrong result. Mm. Amen? Yeah. Well, listen, I want to finish with this. Jesus said this. He quoted Deuteronomy 8.3. When, when Satan came at him at the end of 40 days of fasting, you know, Satan always comes at your weakest point. And he said, and he said to Jesus, command that these stones be made bread. Well, you're starving. Right? Jesus, how did he combat the enemy? Learn these three words. It is written. And he said, man shall not live by bread alone. And then he reveals a principle in the word that you've got to, you've got to know. But man shall live 
by every word Thank you, Jesus. that proceeds from the mouth of God. Thank you, Jesus. See, we live by His words. He is Jehovah Rapha. Yes. Jehovah Rapha. So, Pastor, how would you like to do this? Do you want to minister to the sick? How do you want to... Do you want to do it afterwards? What's that? Pray for people online. Okay, pray for the people online. Do you want to do that? You want me to do that? Okay. So what we'll do first here is for those of you watching online and everybody here, if you would just start praying in the Spirit, if you if you have, have not received the baptism of the Holy Spirit, it's totally fine. You pray in English for those people. So right now, for all of you online, there is a healing anointing. There is no time or distance in the Spirit. So in the name of Jesus, you just lay hands on yourself. If you, if you feel led to, lay hands on the TV, on your cell phone, whatever you want to do. But in the name of Jesus, you be healed right now. Sickness, disease, in the name of Jesus, you must leave these bodies. We speak in the name of Jesus' body, you be healed, you be whole. Right now, work perfectly. Every organ, every system, we thank you for heal. We thank you for knees and joints being healed right now. For blood being healed and cleansed in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. We thank you, Father, that you heal cancer. Hallelujah. In Jesus' name. Will you be blessed? Hallelujah. Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Right now, in the name of Jesus, according to the word that was spoken, according to the, by the anointing of God, you have been healed. Just receive it and run with it. Those of you that watch online, we love you. God is so good. He's good all the time. Just receive His goodness right now. God bless you. And have a blessed week. In Jesus' name. From Amazing Love Church, we love you. Hallelujah.